Hi everyone and welcome back to The Rooftop, the home of good news worth shouting about, where we share positive stories about issues that matter and campaigns that make a difference. I'm Tom York and this is episode five of Rooftop TV. Now, I think it's fair to say that the lockdown is having a significant impact on all of us right now. And I'm not just talking about the effects of social isolation or even the terrible, terrible stories about the human cost of COVID-19 that we hear on the news day in, day out. But for many of us, the crisis is also taking its toll on our mental health as well. Now, I'm always looking for ways to stay healthy, but especially so in the current situation. So this week, I was really happy to learn about a new app that has just been launched, which is all about helping people to look after their mental and physical health during the pandemic. Here with the story, I'm pleased to welcome Heather Rogers. Heather is one of our writers here at The Rooftop. Hi, Heather. Thanks for joining us. Hi, Tom. Thank you for having me on. As you say, one of the worrying side effects of the lockdown has been the impact on people's mental health. And I think we're all more conscious of our mental well-being right now than perhaps ever before. The Office for National Statistics released new figures last week that found that people are actually more affected and more concerned about stress and anxiety than they are about their general health. And meanwhile, a separate study from the London School for Economics has found that mental well-being is actually at an all time low. In response to this, happily, a couple in Germany have come up with a new app to help boost people's mental well-being. It's called Well You in Hard Times. It's totally free to download from the App Store and it contains a wealth of information, tips, tricks and inspiration to help people boost their mental well-being. It contains recommendations from health experts on how to boost your mental, physical and social well-being. Exercises for mind and body, so things such as positive self-reflection ideas for boosting your immune system and also positive inspiration and ways to keep in touch with family members at this difficult time. As I said, it's totally free to download from the App Store and as always, you can find out more information by visiting our website, rooftop.news. Thanks, Heather. I'll definitely be downloading that one. Now, for our next story. Back in February, we heard about a Facebook post about a petition to get the government to review and increase the pay for NHS healthcare workers to recognise the valuable work that they do. So the post went viral within hours of being published. It's now been shared over 20,000 times. And the petition itself has received more than 150,000 signatures. Now, the man behind the petition is a healthcare assistant from the north of England. His name is Shane Longton, and Shane is here with us today to share his story about the campaign. Hi, Shane. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, Tom. Good morning. So what inspired you to start your campaign? Well, after the post went viral, it became apparent that there was a huge appreciation for the work that healthcare workers actually do. And many of the people that shared the post were actually um, healthcare workers themselves and members of the public and after seeing how how many times my post had been shared i decided to set up the petition that's fantastic so obviously you're a healthcare assistant um in a in a hospital close to where you live um you can just tell us a little bit about your job and, and what does it entail Yes, the hospital I work at is a, provides a rehabilitation service for patients transferred from a larger hospital after having had a stroke, um, surgery such as hip replacements, and we help patients get back to their baseline so that they can be discharged back into their home or to a care home. Uh, many of the patients have dementia, Alzheimer's, and Parkinson's so it's a little bit more difficult 
when uh, trying to rehabilitate patients like that. So it's obviously a, a very full on job, I imagine. And, it is, uh, yes. You know, really valuable work. You know, we all we all hear about people in, in those situations and it's often the, the teams working around them that are able to, you know, really rebuild that person's life. So you started the petition, obviously, because you think that um, your pay is not sufficient for the work that you're doing. So why, why do you think it's not sufficient? I think healthcare workers have kind of always been undervalued and obviously with COVID-19, how our job position has changed, our job role in itself has changed. There are so many more elements of our job that are now dominated by COVID-19 and we are going to work every day risking our lives and the pay just doesn't reflect that at all you mentioned there that um you know your job has changed what in terms of how you're working as a result of covid19 so can i just ask what sort of measures measures are in place in the hospital where you're working in terms of ppe and um you know anything else that might be uh, happening there there have been a lot of changes in our job role at work uh, in regards to training we have daily briefings about any changes to the already stringent infection control measures. We have had to undertake training on CPR procedures and we have also had to do training on how to deal with the death of a patient, which is very, very different before COVID-19. Patients are alone without their family and we now become their family in the last moments and that's very difficult. Mm, I, I can't begin to imagine how difficult that must be. I can imagine that even in a normal situation before all of this uh, had happened that must be a really difficult thing to deal with. Now I know we're, we're talking about COVID-19 but I know you actually started the petition uh, long before the, the lockdown was even um, in place. So I think it's important to, to viewers to know that, that you, know, you haven't launched this petition in response to the current situation. But I guess the, uh, the current situation is you know, really emphasising um, the valuable work that you're doing. So how has the success of the petition been going and where, where are you at right now? It's been insane how much support I've had for my petition and I've had um, a lot of press coverage and people sharing my petition link on Facebook, Twitter and I just think that has been a huge, huge help towards that. Um, in regards to setting up this petition before the coronavirus hit, it was set up solely for healthcare workers as myself in response to the post-Brexit changes set out by Preeti Patel. The term unskilled was upsetting to read. Our job is far from unskilled, it really is. Mm. I, can, I can really uh, hear your, your frustration there. Um, and it, it's it's a great thing your petition. So you've you've got more than I think one hundred and fifty thousand signatures now. When I checked yes. yesterday, I think it was one hundred and fifty two thousand. So it's it's going up all the time. And you know, as many of our viewers will know, um, when a petition on Parliament UK reaches one hundred thousand signatures, it means that um, the the petition the the subject will be debated in Parliament. So. Have you got a date yet, Shane, when it will be debated in Parliament? So on the 5th of May, I did receive a response from the government, which gave recognition to healthcare workers and the work that we do. They went on to mention the pre-planned pay rise, which was secured by the union. But this was pre-planned and doesn't take into consideration the changes to our job role going to work every day, risking your life every day. So mm. I do think they need to consider 
consider that matter. Well, we we really look forward to you know watching this campaign, and obviously it's been very successful so far. Um, what do you see happening next? I'm hoping to get more signatures, even though I have secured that 100,000 benchmark for the potential for a debate. I'm hoping that I can get more backing from MPs, maybe the unions. I might come across as a one man band, but I feel I have the UK behind me. So who knows? Mm, well, you've certainly got a legion of supporters and um, hopefully our viewers watching today will be inspired and they'll get behind you too. And, and we can see those signatures going up and up and up. So um, I hope so. Yeah. Wishing you all the best for it, Shane. And um, thanks for coming and speaking to us. Um, and we wish you every success. Thank you very much for this opportunity, Tom. You're welcome. Thanks, Shane. Now for our final story. As we've spoken about, COVID-19 has seen an incredible swell of public appreciation for today's NHS heroes and wider healthcare workers and key workers. You know, we have our clap for carers every Thursday evening. And now there is also a brand new social media website, which is a dedicated place where people can go and share their messages and words of thanks and support to healthcare workers in the NHS and also across the world. It's, it's an international site. Heather, I believe you've got more details about the story. That's right, Tom. Throughout the pandemic, people around the world have been amazed and humbled by the fantastic work being done by healthcare workers. One organisation has created a new website called Thank You Healthcare, where they are trying to collate all of this information and all of these wonderful messages of support into one place. And what they've done is create what they're calling a global gratitude map. So far, they've already got over four million messages of support collated in one place for people to go and have a look at. It's totally interactive. You can go on there, look at where there are current gratitude hotspots and also add your own messages of support. So if you want to go on, say something positive or uplifting about the key workers in your area or the hospitals or clinics or care homes, then it's a really great place to, to do that. It's also a great place for healthcare workers themselves to visit, to find out just how valued and loved and respected they are the world over and just see some of those lovely messages that are, that are coming in and hopefully give them a boost during what must be, as we've been hearing from Shane, an incredibly difficult time. Thanks, Heather. Um... Well, that's almost all we've got time for this week. But before we go, I just wanted to say a huge thank you to everyone who's sending us stories. Um, we've literally blown away by how many we're receiving each week. Um, it's fantastic. But as always, if you've got a good story that you want to shout from the rooftop about, email it to us at editor at the rooftop dot news. Well, that really is all we've got time for. I'm Tom York, and this is The Rooftop, the home of good news worth shouting about. Thanks for watching. See you next time.